Hey, what's up, guys? Kane here with XBLA fans. I'm just going to go through the weekly deals, Xbox One sales, and deals with gold really quickly uh, because this week in particular just has a massive ID at Xbox focus. So it seems like they decided to sneak in another big indie sale right after uh, E3. So there's a lot of good games in this one and a lot of really, really low markdown prices. And some of these are definitely worth your time. So I'm going to try to just kind of like explain a little bit of each of these. Uh, if you notice, this article only got about to F last night before we had to, to head to bed. So hopefully I can just kind of give you a little bit of an oral opinion on some of these just really quickly. Uh, but eight days, it's a twin stick shooter. I had a really hard time with this one, actually. It's very, very difficult, in my opinion. Um, it plays kind of like Reagan Gorbachev or, you know, like Hotline Miami type of game. Um, very much, you know, you get hit, you're dead type deal. So if you like twin sticks that are a little bit more on the punishing side, uh, it might be for you. I personally wouldn't recommend it, but I could definitely see an audience that would be interested in it. Active Soccer 2DX. Um, I have not played this one. I believe Zero did, and we were pretty iffy on it as far as a review goes. I mean, if you're looking for a top-down arcade soccer game, or football probably, I mean, honestly, if you're looking for it, you probably call it the sport football. So it's kind of weird that the name is actually Active Soccer. Um, but it's three bucks, so it's a little bit more in that, like, kind of maybe all do it range, you know? So another World 20th Anniversary, another action platformer, um... Another remaster, obviously, <laughs> considering it's the 20th anniversary edition. Uh, we gave it a try. It was originally 8 bucks. It's now down to about 250 which uh, definitely moves it back into kind of a sweet spot for me. But, like, uh, I don't know. That one's one I might actually be looking at myself just because I don't have it. Um, Aqua Kitty UDX. This is actually a really, really fun kind of, like, baby shmup. Like, I don't know how else to call it, but it, it's actually pretty enjoyable. I had a lot of fun with this one. So you you play as a cat in a underwater, like, submarine, and you're, like, trying to farm milk. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little weird. It's a little out there, but, like, it's kind of cool. So I would definitely say, like, of the ones we've gone through so far, this one is definitely one I would take a look at. Um, I definitely think like the difficulty is almost in a good range for just about anybody. All right, so we got Bit Dungeon Plus. Um, after being captured by demons, they must explore randomized dungeons in search of their beloved friend. I have not played this one. I believe it just came out, so it's kind of surprising to see it on sale this quickly. Um, but it's a decent price, so this one I can't really give you too much of an opinion on. Uh, if you are interested in it, just leave a comment and I can try to get uh, someone who did play it to come in here and uh, talk about it a little bit on the YouTube uh, comments. Uh, Breach and Clear Deadline. I actually really like this game. I thought this game was a lot of fun. So, uh, I don't know. I don't I don't think a lot of people played it, but it's definitely worth checking out. We gave it a reader's choice, but it was originally 15 bucks. Now it's 4 So this plays kind of like uh, XCOM if XCOM was a roguelike dungeon crawler. So, like... I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. So I would I would actually recommend this one. This is a really cool game worth checking out. All right. So here's my first achievement buy. If you were here for achievements, Cell Damage HD, pretty much the main reason to buy it. So unless you play local split screen multiplayer racing games and you were just really dying for, you know, like a Mario Kart type clone, uh, this is probably not a game for you. However, if you are someone who cares about achievements and wants to just kind of play a racing game that's kind of chill, it's pretty good for that. Uh, I believe you can complete this pretty quickly. I know I have, which means it must have been pretty easy. Now, Chariot was formerly a Games of Gold game. However, it is a pretty solid game. Uh, so if by some fluke you didn't pick it up then, it is worth looking into. I'm not going to go too in-depth on it. It is a physics-based uh, platformer that does have couch co-op. Um, you actually need the co-op to be able to do some of the achievements. It is a very difficult achievement game, if that's something you care about. So just kind of warn you on that. Uh, Clouds in Sheep 2. All right, so this game looks really stupid. I'm just going to be blunt. Like, go, go pull it up. Look at this game. Like, just pause the video real quick. Pull this game up. Look at it. And you're going to be like, man, that's kind of dumb. It's really fun. <laughs> so, like, you tend to your group of sheep and you do stupid stuff to them, like paint them. 
and you know like make them into snowmen and like make them jump on trampolines and other weird stuff it's just kind of weird it's kind of out there and it's just kind of fun uh it's a really good game if you're just looking for something to veg out while you watch netflix or some other thing on tv so if you're really into watching streams or you know like watching sports or something and you just want something to play in the background this is a great game for that three dollars and thirty cents uh, is a pretty reasonable price tag for what it is now crypt of the necrodancer this is a very good um dungeon explorer like uh roguelike whatnot um the cool thing about this one is it's a rhythm game that is also a roguelike that is also a dungeon crawler it's just kind of out there so it's a really good soundtrack. Uh, there's some extra, you know, tunes from like Chipsel, as well as the original uh, artist. And like, there's some cool stuff to this. This is a very, very good game at five dollars. It is actually a really fantastic game. Um, I would recommend this if you were into this genre. However, personally, I still actually enjoyed Quest of Dungeons more, and it's a little bit cheaper. But this game obviously has a little bit more depth. As well as there's more to it, and it's got that whole rhythm nuance added on. Whereas Quest of Dungeons is a little more old school and a little more simplistic. But I still liked both of them, to be honest. Like, they're both really good games. If you're into this genre, and you haven't played either of them, I would pick them both up. However, um, if you haven't really played either, and you're looking for one that's a little more um, player friendly, I think uh, Quest of Dungeons would be the pick. Whereas, I think if you're looking for something that's a little more unique, Crypt of the Necrodancer would be the pick. This is definitely the more unique of the two. So, as far as uh, Dad Beats Dads, this is another pretty easy achievement game for 99, 90 cents. Um, it's a local-only multiplayer brawler. It's it's kind of fun. I played it a little bit with someone else, and I mean, like it's, it's not bad. It's not anything like super amazing. But at the same time, if you're just looking for achievements, it's a pretty easy one. Uh, Death Squared is a local co-op puzzle game for up to four players. Uh, this one's fantastic. Um, I've only played a little bit of this one. Um, but what I have played, it definitely had some portal vibes to it. And that's what I mean in a good way. Like, you know, like there's some cool stuff going on here. Um, it's very much moving around these four different blocks um, to different areas of the puzzles. And kind of different mechanics pop up. But it's got this whole kind of... Uh, you know, portalish vibe with the way it like uses humor and some other things. Like it's it's definitely pretty creative. Uh, what I've played, I really liked. It's definitely one that I would say is worth looking into. Uh, the price tag is probably one of the worst drops in this entire sale, though. So if you're looking for value, this may not be the pick. However, if you're looking for just a good quality game that is on sale, this is definitely one to look at. It's a very solid game. Um, Dogos. Now I have not played Dogos. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not into shmups at all. Like, I don't like them. That's why it was really funny to me that I actually liked Aqua Kitty Friends or whatever. Or Aqua Kitty UDX Ultra Xbox One Edition. Like, that game was good. Um, but I'm not normally into these. So, I can't really give you too much of an opinion on Dogos. Uh, just because, like, I'll be honest, I don't like that genre. So, Dynamite Fishing World Games. I've heard this one's kind of interesting. Um, I haven't played it. Um, it's... It was normally five bucks. Now it's a dollar sixty-five. That's about what it's gonna take for me to buy something like this. It's another one of those kind of like basic. Uh, I think it's the same devs as Cloud and Sheep. Kind of just one of those basic kind of like uh, weird little mobile games that's on console. I got like I hate using mobile as like a pejorative term, but in this context, I think it like explains what it is. You know, like it's it's one of those games that you should just be able to understand pretty quickly from me using that term like it's something that it feels like you should be playing on your phone whereas like i feel like it's kind of weird because that term is just completely weird now because like there's a lot of games on here that are actually mobile games that are still pretty solid uh emily wants to play so i don't know if you guys ever played wick or if you ever played emily wants to play or seen either of them but basically it's like as the night goes on the game gets a little more difficult and you try to make it out while living uh there's some creepy animated dolls and a little girl named emily it's kind of a little bit of a horror game a little bit of kind of like a survival thing um it's, it's interesting i haven't actually played this one very much i played more of wick and wick is pretty much the same game from what i've been told so, like, I enjoyed it for the most part, but obviously it gets a little repetitive, and there's a couple difficult levels and achievements based on those. But 
just something to consider. Uh, Exiles End, an exploration-driven side-scrolling adventure platformer. Uh, very much retro-inspired. Uh, this is not one I've played. However, it is one I'm looking at and I might pick up. So, like, this is another one that I'm personally considering picking up just because, like, it's one of the few I don't actually have. Um, Fortified. This is a tower defense shooter matchup. It kind of reminds me a little bit of something like Trenched. Um, we gave it a try it because, honestly, it was really unbalanced, I believe, if I'm recalling correctly. I played a ton of it, but it felt very, very unbalanced when you were not playing with uh, people online. The cool thing is it does have online uh, co-op, something that's pretty good for 5 bucks. So... If that's something you're into, definitely worth looking into. Now, four-sided fantasy for $3 is fantastic if you like puzzle games. If you like puzzle platformers, this is a fantastic game for $3. Um, it's only about an hour and a half long. It's something you can beat really quickly. You're going to get like 600 gamer score almost immediately. Uh, there's two achievements, I believe, that are really difficult that are going to take you a while to come back and get. But other than that, you can get most of it. And it's just it's just a fun puzzle platformer. This is one that I think I like more than the average person. Uh, like, I don't think we gave this a high review. Um, I'm trying to just remember off the top of my head. I think we're actually pretty down on it, but I really like the game personally. And I think if you're into puzzle platforming, it's pretty solid. Uh, Guns, Gore, and Cannoli is a fantastic run and gun game. So you kind of just run around and shoot zombies and like whatever it is, like, uh, like mobster style new york or something i don't even remember anymore but like it's just cool like it's a cool game like it's it's just fun it's got some good humor it's actually a pretty easy completion if you're into achievements um it's just a solid all-around game for 330 like uh this is one that i honestly really really wanted to recommend when i was uh, doing my tweet earlier but i just like couldn't figure out how to fit it in price wise because it was just like mm. You know, like it, like I was trying to figure out like the best games you could get for five or fifteen bucks, and like this one was just on the outside for me. Like it's it's really good. So Gunscape is five bucks. I haven't really played Gunscape. I'm not gonna go too into it. Um, I, I think it just came out too late. Like there's too many other games along that style for me to get into it. Heart and Slash is a roguelike. Um, I didn't really like it. I thought it was kind of too random at times and there wasn't enough feeling of progression uh like you unlock different weapons and stuff but you still have a lot of randomness where sometimes you just get like absolutely screwed with the way weapon drops happen um it's pretty difficult um if you're into like a 3d roguelike um kind of brawler like you might be into it but for me personally like this is one i would say skip um like not something i'd recommend 20 bucks showing that it's now like 10 like, this shows you how highly priced it was originally. It's just not in there for me. Now, Her Majesty Spiffing at 610 is a reasonable price. This is basically the length of a single Telltale episode. Uh, maybe slightly longer. It's a two-hour game. You can complete it really fast. If you're looking for gamer score, this is a good one for that. So, if you just want gamer score, this is easy. It's got some humor. It's definitely very high on stereotyping and some other issues related to that. So if you're someone who gets like easily offended by that type of stuff, just avoid it. But like it's quintessential British humor and kind of a lot of poking fun at themselves over some stuff. Uh, Hunter's Legacy is a cool little uh, game. So you play as a cat. You kind of run around on a 2D like side scroller. It's kind of like a Metroidvania mixed with like kind of like a Zelda game almost in a sense. Um it's just interesting for two bucks. It's one I'm going to be picking up. So I haven't played this one. That's why I'm a little fuzzy on it. But like, it's something I know I'm going to be picking up. So for two ten, I think that's a definitely a reasonable price for me to grab that. Now, Jotun Valhalla Edition is very much kind of like a boss rush game. It's very, very beautiful. It's probably one of the most beautiful games that I've seen on Xbox. Like, the art style is just awesome. So like, it's it's beautiful for that. But you have to like games that are kind of like more of like a Dark Soulsy kind of feel. Uh, probably to get into this because it's a lot of you know learning boss mechanics and learning how to roll around and dodge and block and do all this other stuff and i believe if i'm right the majority of the game is walking from point a to point b to then fight a giant boss so like the boss is kind of like the big thing i only made it about like four or five hours into this game uh before i just kind of like backburnered it but it wasn't because it was bad. It just wasn't my type of thing. 
but is very, very pretty. And it's worth checking out to see if it's something you'd be into. If what I'm saying sounds interesting. Now, laser life is kind of a, a cool little game. So it's a, it's a weird little rhythm game in a sense. And like you like go through the memories of this, like, uh, I don't know, astronaut or something. And like, as you're doing it, you're just like hitting stuff to the beat. Um, it's a very, very easy, like 900. And there's one achievement that's actually a little difficult. Um, it, it's just kind of a cool little game. I enjoyed it a lot for the most part. Um, it was just fun. It's only like two to three hours long. It's a pretty quick game. So you can beat that really fast. Um, $3 is probably a very fair price for that, in my opinion. Now, Letter Quest Grimm's Journey Remastered. Um, this game was pretty cool. Um, I liked it for the most part. It um, It's kind of a Scrabble spelling game, uh, you know, with like kind of some dungeon crawling aspects. It, it's just pretty neat. Um, level 22, though, however, this is one I would really, really like to recommend a lot. So I hate stealth games, just flat out. I hate stealth games. I think they're the crappiest genre that's ever been invented. Even, even more than anything else. And I don't like shmups. I'm bad at shmups. That's why I don't like shmups. I just don't like those because I'm bad at them. That's, that's completely why. I'm not even going to deny that. I just hate stealth games because I think they're dumb. Because <laughs> I'm impatient. And I don't like waiting. And I don't like having to, you know, redo segments because someone saw me. I'm just like, no. Let me just beat everybody. I'll just beat them all up. But no, level 22 is a stealth game. But it is a good stealth game. It's also a mobile game. Um, it's a very, very good one though. So this one I highly recommend for $1.75. There are very few people on Xbox one who should not own that game. It is just fun. It's got good humor. It's got some decent like mechanics. It's uh, it's just clever. And it's like only like what three hours long or something. I think it's a nice, easy Xbox one completion. Uh, you can get your thousand gamer score really fast. It's just fun. Lost Sea, I have not played much of. I don't really want to comment on this one because this is one of the few ones I do not recall very well. So, like, I'm doing most of these from memory. And, like, this one I didn't play. Um, I do believe I own it. I just haven't had a chance to go back to it yet. Um, Massive Chalice, I love this game. This game was amazing. I played this game for, like, 10 hours on launch day. I got so addicted. I just kept going. I just couldn't stop. Uh, like I was streaming it. We had like 500 people watching and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Plus I love the game and I just love going tacos because my guy's name was taco or something. I don't remember, but it was just fun. Um, it's kind of an XCOM game. Um, but kind of more set in like a game of thronesy kind of thing, like more so than, you know, like aliens and stuff. Like it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, momentum is, uh, one of those kind of marble games. Um, I don't like this game at all. I think it's very unfair. I think the camera angles are very bad. I think there's so much wrong with it. Um, but like, there's other people out there who might be into it. I, I just, I can't stand it. Like <laughs> I played this thing for like an hour and a half and I just like, I think I uninstalled it. Uh, it's just honestly really frustrating. There's a lot of things about it that are just not, not there for me. Um, if you're really, really, really into kind of these like marble puzzle platformer type things like this might be for you it's just not for me uh monochroma uh man i can't remember this one but i believe this is the one i couldn't play because it didn't have colorblind mode like i don't want to i don't want to slam it for that because i cannot recall because there were two games that came out right around the same time that are very similar and honestly, I'm going to double check this because I don't, I don't want to talk too much smack on it. If I am wrong, I am wrong. This is not the one I was thinking it was. Okay. So this one I can play. So I, I totally got mixed up with this. So this is totally different than what I was thinking it was. It's a puzzle platformer cinematic. I have not played this one. Um, I was thinking of a different game that was very similar in name. And this one's kind of, you know, got that like kind of black and white kind of limbo type of look. Uh, you can definitely try to see what they're going for with it, but I don't know. Like, this is not one I've played, so I can't really comment on it. I was thinking it was a different one. Um, Nebulous. I did not like Nebulous. Zero hated Nebulous. Zero still hates Nebulous. He mentions this to me all the time, complaining about it. So Nebulous is this weird kind of uh, thing where you have to, like, get an astronaut from point A to point B. It's clearly meant to be a VR game. 
the entire thing is set up like a VR screen with three different screens. So like I have three monitors right now, but that's how the game plays because you're supposed to be able to look from side to side. But like, you know, you can't actually do that in a game. So it just does not play well. Nothing about this works like inherently meant for Xbox. It's just strange. So Ninja Pizza Girl, uh, this game's pretty fun. Uh, as far as like, um, what is it? Um, I'm trying to think of the genre. I was like gonna call it a speedrunner, but that's not it. Um, like almost like an endless runner kind of, uh, but it's not endless runner. Yeah, whatever it is, it, it's it's kind of fun. It's like a running platformer game. Uh, you're delivering pizzas in a certain amount of time. There's some cool mechanics to it. I think it's actually pretty fun. I think for two dollars and fifty cents, this is definitely worth looking into. Uh, it's nothing mind blowing, but it is definitely a good, fun waste of time in a sense. Now, Organic Panic, uh, this is kind of a thing where you play as, like, vegetables and stuff. And you, like, can destroy the environment. Uh, this is one I'm looking into picking up. I have not played this one. Uh, I believe it is local-only co-op, and that's part of why I was scared off originally for the original price. But it, it looks like it's going to be pretty interesting, and that's one I'm probably going to be checking out. Um, not one that I can recommend, though, because I haven't played much of it. Uh, Paranautical Activity, I've heard some bad things about this one in general. Um, I believe it's a roguelike if I'm, yeah, it is, it is. So like, as far as just like kind of these roguelikes go, this is just not one that was at the top of the list from what I remember. It's not one I have played, so I can't really give too, like, I'm not gonna go too in depth on this one, but it's not one that I would recommend. Polychromatic was originally like what? Three bucks. It's now 99 cents. Still a very good game. If you like twin stick shooters, this is a very simplistic kind of, uh, look at one. You know, it's like a deconstructed version of a twin stick shooter. It's just everything is very, very bare bones and basic, but very good. So this is definitely one I would recommend. For 99 cents, it's worth it if you're just going to play it for, you know, a couple hours even. Like, it, it's fun. Uh, Quest of Dungeons. This is one of my favorite games on Xbox One. I'm a little weird in the fact that this is one of my favorite games on Xbox One. But I love this game. I absolutely love this game. This game is amazing. Um, it reminds me a lot of Rogue which I used to play on like MS DOS and like, I love that thing. Like it plays very similar, you know, like when you move the enemy moves very simplistic. Um, not that hard to get a one K on. Um, it will take a little bit of effort on some of them, but it's just a fun game. RBI baseball 17. All right. So the only reason, the only reason to buy this game is you do not own a PlayStation and you desperately, desperately, desperately want to play as an MLB team. If you want to play a baseball game, get super mega baseball, wait for super mega baseball too. do not buy RBI baseball 17, unless you are that desperate to play as an MLB team. This game is terrible. It has basically not been updated for four years in a row. Practically uh, the graphics, I think got slight improvement from four years ago, but like, they look identical to last year. Like I played this and I played last year's and I was like flipping between them on stream and nobody could tell the difference. Like we were just like, what, what is this nonsense? So you're paying $20 for a roster update for a game that didn't even have online functionality at launch. Cause God knows what they were doing with it this time. Like this has been one of the most embarrassing franchises in my opinion on Xbox one. And it's just downright insulting that MLB just keeps putting out a low budget, absolute bare bones attempt at this and trying to call it nostalgia you can't call something nostalgia four years in a row like it it just doesn't work anymore you're just putting out the shittiest product you can and that's just what you're trying to do like <laughs> that's all this is that's them trying to put out something just so they have something and it's not a good product uh, Saturday morning RPG. This is full of nostalgia in a good way. So segues, I'm good at them sometimes, but yeah, this one's pretty cool. So for 250, this is another one that was almost on my like quick tweet recommendations. And like, dude, this one's solid. It's a very very solid game. So if you like RPGs and you were alive in like the 80s and 90s, like there's a lot of cool stuff in here. So screen cheat, this is like a cool concept that I don't know. I never really got too into. I do know it has multiplayer and it's uh, pretty solid for that. I think, uh, I believe it wasn't too hard on the achievements from friends. I know who did it. Um, but the whole concept is like 
you're supposed to look at everyone else's screens to be able to see like where they're at and stuff to be able to kill them. It's just an interesting mechanic. Uh, Shred it is an endless runner. There we go. So you like skateboard through this cool little like paper environment. Every design is kind of like paper and other various things. It's kind of cool looking. Uh, very peaceful, very chill, like just kind of a fun little game. All right, so Siegecraft Commander is the weirdest RTS I've ever played in my life. So instead of being able to, you know, just like go and build wherever you want to build or, you know, having to build on specific plots, you can basically build anywhere you can catapult a base to. And that's how this game plays. You just randomly catapult your base forward and, you know, the enemy does that too. And eventually you meet and you fight and you do all this different combat stuff. Uh, it didn't really control too well. I thought it was a little too erratic. It was not something I would have been willing to pay full price for. But for $5, it is definitely not, like, unworth looking at. <laughs> like, I know that sounds like the worst, like, backhanded compliment ever. But, like, honestly, like, the game is pretty decent. It just felt a little off. Um, I'm not sure if they've had any kind of major updates since launch because it's not one I've kept up with. But I remember at launch thinking, man, it was just kind of like, it was so close to being good. And it like just didn't get there, man. It just didn't get there. Like it was so stinking close. All right. So Solar Shifter EX, this is kind of a, a weird little shmup type game, if I recall correctly, where you can like shift from point A to point B kind of. Um, this game is the game. I was looking at these ahead of time that actually had some kind of flag on TA. So this is the only one that had a flag and it's definitely something you want to know about uh, if you're into achievements and stuff because there may be something that is not achievable for whatever reason, whether it's glitched or whether just something changed or something. So that's just one I wanted to like just flag ahead of time and let you know about. As far as I'm aware, that was the only one on there from this entire list. There's a massive list and that was the one that was there. So just something to consider. Spareware is, I believe, a twin stick shooter and it is kind of bare bones and is honestly the game that this sounds really bad, but the idea at Xbox Discord normally uses as their like bad game. So like that's the one that they normally use is like kind of just joking about it. Like not the idea at Xbox team, don't get me wrong, but just the community on that Discord normally is like, oh, spareware. I've just never got it. Like, I've, I've not really played much of it. I didn't think it was that great or that bad. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Stories of Betham Full Moon is not one I recall at all. So this is a classic RPG adventure full of puzzles. Um, kind of got, like, a Zelda look to it. Yeah, definitely trying to do, like, a Zelda look to it. I have not played this one. I know very little about it. It is one I might consider picking up because it's only 260 so that's one I'll have to look into a little bit. Like I said, some of these I like just don't recall as well as others, and that was one of them. Now, Super Gun World 2 is uh, from my friend Joe. So like, I'm just gonna tell you outright. Like, I know the dev who did this one pretty well. He's a good dude. Uh, it's 240. Honestly, if you like Mega Man type games or you know like that whole kind of old school retro feel, like these are pretty good. He improved a ton from Gun World 1 to Gun World 2. And it's kind of a bummer because I don't think a lot of people gave it a chance. And honestly, he improved a ton from Gun World 2 to Super Gun World. So Super Gun World made the game way more accessible to the average player. And that's something that's definitely worth looking into, in my opinion. Super Mutant Alien Assault was not one that I was into. I do remember playing this one. Um, just to double check, though. Like... <laughs> I feel kind of weird having to do this, but yeah, this is what I thought it was. So you're on a ship and you've basically just got like random things you got to do. You just got to clear random rooms full of enemies with a arcade platform shooter. It's honestly not anything special. It's local only, not really that great. Super party sports football. All right. So I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry for having to check some of these now, but like they're just starting to get a little blurry. So this is another handy games game. Uh, this one plays a lot like baseball riot. Um, I think it was actually slightly better than Baseball Riot. I don't recall entirely which was the best. I think Tennis in the Face was actually the best. They're all three the same game. Uh, two of them from one dev, one of them from the other. This is the one from the other. 
Uh, Silvio is a kind of horror game that plays a lot on sound. Um, it's an interesting looking game for $3. It is a much more fair price than what it originally was. Uh, definitely worth looking into. Uh, Tabletop Racing World Tour for $10. Um, I don't know. I don't feel like that's that much of a sale personally. Uh, it's a decent racing game. So like if you're into uh, like just racing and local racing and stuff, it's it's not bad. Like it's not a bad game. I just don't feel like that sale is anything to, to kind of brag about. Um, Tachyon Project, I believe, is a twin stick shooter. I don't want to like get that wrong. Yeah. Okay. Dual stick shooter. Some kind of story. I have not actually played this one. Um, and two bucks is a decent price. So if you're like a big twin stick shooter fan, there's like four of them in here. I would say Polychromatic is the one to get though, because it's 99 cents or whatever. Like decent game for that cheap. Pretty impressive. Talent not included. Okay. I like this game. This game is really unique. It's pretty fun. It's a platformer. It's got some cool things going on. The entire thing is set in like almost like a play. It's just pretty neat how it's done. This is really, really creative. Um, for three bucks, I think it's a very fair price. Uh, like I would definitely look into this one. This one's definitely worth looking into. Uh, there's like two or three more decent games on this list and I'm going to just try to go through all of them still, but like some of these are not the greatest. Tesla Punk is kind of a shmup. It's not one I'm into. Um, it's got a weird little art style that's kind of cool though. Just in the sense that it's different. And I mean like, what are you like celebrating Tesla or something? I think as you're like playing it, it's, it's just kind of interesting. It's a, it's a game that like if you're into those type of things, just look it up. It's, it's kind of creative. The bridge is really cool. So the entire thing is like a puzzle game set in like an Escher painting. And, like, that just makes it amazing, in my opinion. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing this one. It's also a very easy completion, if that's something you care about. But I just thought it was just super neat. It's just super, super neat. Um, like, yeah, like, if you like puzzle games, if you like kind of, like, the, the look of, you know, just, uh, um, what is it, like, Escher paintings and stuff, it's just super cool. So that's the bridge. The bridge, I, I would say I recommend pretty highly. Uh, the Fall is another good game. Um, I always get this one mixed up with the Swapper. Like, I know which one's which, but yeah, they look very similar. That's what I was thinking. So this one is a pretty solid game. So you play as Arid. You're an artificial intelligence. And you have, like, a person on your, you know, inside you that you're trying to, like, protect. So, like, that's what you got to do. So, you're just going in through, you know, it's got some basic kind of, like, combat puzzle mechanics and stuff. Like, nothing too crazy. It's a decent story-driven game. It's the first of, like, a trilogy. Um, hopefully, we get the rest of the trilogy when everything happens and it's said and done. Uh, it's just pretty unique. Uh, the Magic Circle Gold Edition. So, Magic Circle Gold Edition is a super strange game. I'm going to have to pull this up just because I don't know how else to talk about it. It, like, breaks the fourth wall. It does some weird, weird, weird stuff. You're the protagonist of an unfinished first-person adventure game. So that just kind of tells you, like, what it is. Or a first-person fantasy game. Like, the game isn't finished. So you can do some weird stuff where you can kind of, like, almost, like, kind of, like, game dev your way out of situations. It's just kind of weird. Like, it's one that I need to go back and play. I haven't really touched much of it. I played a little tiny bit. Just enough to kind of get a feel for it. Now, the sun and the moon is a cool little platformer. Uh, you have to like games that are very, very kind of like difficult in a sense to like perfect. Because um, you're going to be doing a lot of like speed running basically on this platformer. Um, it's It's got this cool little mechanic where like as you go inside something, like gravity doesn't like affect it. And then like you can bounce back up higher. It's just got this weird jumping mechanic. It's kind of cool. All right, so the Turing test. All right, this is probably my pick for the entirety of this thing. So, like, for anybody who's stuck around this long, this is the one that I would highly, 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 highly recommend. Uh, I think $6 is an absolute steal for this game. I was not the biggest fan of this game when it came out because I thought it was a little overpriced for what it was. But, like, we're splitting hairs at this point. We're debating between is it, like, a must-buy or a highly recommend, you know? And for me, I think it would have been more toward a highly recommend. For this price, it's definitely a must-buy. This is a very, very, very good game. 
very good game for the length of uh, gameplay it is for six bucks now is pretty realistic uh, if you liked Anuma, it's from the same devs. It's a good little puzzle game. It's very enjoyable. It's got a decent little plot and story going on. I would just say it's definitely worth your time. Three Force Home Extended Edition. Now, this is a cool little game. Um, uh, what It's more of like a visual novel more than anything. It was a very easy completion, though at one point in time, I do know achievements were glitched in it. So I would recommend checking that ahead of time. However, Three Force Home was uh, pretty easy. Um, it's got like a weird little kind of story going on. Uh, it's definitely pretty interesting. So if that's something you're into, definitely take a look at it. Uh, Toto Temple Deluxe, I believe, is a local only kind of multiplayer game. It's not really one that I would personally recommend. Uh, Turn On is another kind of like runner, but like puzzle game. So you like jump from like light to light kind of it's like on three rails it's kind of cool looking uh i picked it up i think two sales ago like when it was on sale last time and i definitely think it looked interesting so i haven't had time to play it unnamed fiasco i do not recall at all like this is just a little too forgettable um it's another one of those kind of multiplayer matches local only four player like honestly, I don't I don't know who those are aimed at, but for two fifty, like if you're looking for just like one night of fun, like that might be good with a group. Vertical Drop Heroes reminded me a lot of like Rogue Legacy. However, instead of you know going into a castle and exploring, you know you're just dropping down like a tube in a sense. But it's it's very similar in how like the different lineages of the different rogue like characters you play can kind of progress and you can get different weapons and abilities based on all that so there's some cool stuff going on with that one i would definitely say that one's pretty decent but let me just go through these one last time for people who just kind of want a tldr um skip skip <laughs> maybe decent uh don't know enough i love this one only for achievements um it was games of gold but it's a good game so hopefully you already have it um, only if you're going to watch it while playing Netflix. Very, very good. I personally recommend Quested Dungeons over this one. However, if you're looking for something more unique, this one's probably the one to pick. Uh, Dad Beats Dads, decent local only for co-op, uh, just kind of combat. Uh, really only want it if you want achievements, in my opinion. Very, very good game. The sale price might not be enough for it, though, but it's very, very good. Uh, not my genre. Another kind of like mobile-ish game, but not the greatest um emily wants to play uh this is decent if you're looking for kind of like a little bit of a horror game um i haven't played this one enough fortified only really worth it if you're going to play co-op um very very good puzzle game very very good run and gun game i would pick up both of these seriously like i think they're both definitely worth it uh gunscape no hardened slash no Spiffing is decent if you're looking for kind of a story-driven or easy achievements. Hunter's Legacy is one I am picking up. Jotun Valhalla. Uh, you got to like boss fights and you got to like, you know, that kind of feel. It's got a really good look, though. Laser Life is definitely pretty solid for three bucks. I would consider that one. Uh, if you're into like Scrabble or something, this is worth it. Highly, 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 highly recommend level 22. So very, very good. Uh, I haven't played enough of that one. Massive Chalice is fantastic if you like XCOM type games. Um, pass. Don't know enough. Definitely pass. Uh, pretty decent. I'm probably going to pick this one up. I would pass. Definitely good. Definitely good. Don't even consider this. Like, just... No. Like, delete. I would delete that if I could. Like, straight up. I don't think anyone should buy that. Um, like, stop supporting this nonsense. Like, please. Stop letting them get away with this crap. Uh, Saturday morning RPG, very, very good. Um, and it's okay. Uh, I actually enjoyed this one a lot. If you really want kind of like a RTS type game, it's okay. Um, it has glitched achievements, not the best twin stick. Um, I might pick this one up. Uh, this one's actually pretty solid. Consider it. Um, no, probably a no. Uh, that's a no for me personally. Again, no. Uh, still not there for me. I would say yes. Um, Tesla Punk, uh, no. Bridge, Fall, yeah. No, no, yes. Achievements only. 
no. That one's decent, and that one's decent. So, like, for me personally, I if, if I was coming in here and I just had an infinite budget, definitely Aqua Kitty, definitely Breach and Clear, um, definitely Crypt of the Necrodancer. Death Squad's really good, but it's too expensive still, in my opinion. Uh, Four-Sided Fantasy, Guns, Gore, and Cannoli, definitely. Um, I'm probably going to pick up Hunter's Legacy myself, so I'm going to include that one anyway. Level 22, um, Quest of Dungeons, Saturday Morning RPG, um, Talent Not Included is pretty good, The Bridge, The Fall, and Touring Test. Like, some really solid games here. Uh, the ones that I recommended, if you only had 15 bucks, I'm just going to read these. Um, the Bridge, The Turing Test, Polychromatic, Level 22, Quest of Dungeons. That puts you just under 15 bucks. So if you have like a very limited budget, that's the ones I'd go for. However, if, depending on the genres, you could definitely sub in some of these other games. Like The Fall is really good. Uh, Saturday Morning RPG is really good. You know, if like Quest of Dungeons or something doesn't, or doesn't sound appealing, you could always sub in something else. Or, you know, Crypt of the Necrodancer, very similar to Quest of Dungeons, if you already have one. Uh, it's This is kind of the other. They're both very good, though. But, uh, sorry, this video is a little bit longer than normal. Uh, I tried to keep this pretty on point, but obviously there's a lot of different games. I know I kind of rambled a little bit at times, and some of these games I'm a little less familiar with than others. And, unfortunately, I don't kind of have a script in front of me this time, because we didn't get all of these finished. So, these are pretty much just coming at you from memory. But I did check, um, the only one I believe that had any glitched achievements at all was Solar Shifter EX. That was the one to kind of just be a little wary of. But other than that, you should be good on all of these. Uh, thank you guys so much again for checking out this video. I really do appreciate it. If you have questions about any one of these specific games, just leave them in the comments and I will track down the person on our staff who played that game if I need to, to have them answer your question. So thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. And later.